You know, if you're completely brand new and learning how to use Articulate Storyline for the first time, then you're in the right place because we're going to take a quick overview and tour of the Articulate Storyline interface. I think that rhymed. Who knows? Stick around. Hey there, folks. Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy. You know, if you're completely brand new to Articulate Storyline, you might find yourself a little overwhelmed the first time you open it. But, you know, I have been teaching folks how to use Articulate Storyline since it first came out way back in 2012. And since then, you know, I'll be honest, I've never had anyone accidentally, you know, launch a nuclear missile because they clicked the wrong button. So, you know, if you're just diving into Storyline for the first time, a good place to start is with a tour of the general interface. So let's get to it. All right, so here I am on my Windows desktop, and assuming you have already installed Articulate 360 onto your computer, there are a couple of different ways that we can launch Storyline. Of course, we can always find it in our apps folder here by clicking the Start button, uh, but perhaps the easiest way is by clicking on the Articulate icon down here in our taskbar where we can launch the Articulate 360 app. And Articulate 360, if you remember, is a suite of tools, which includes Storyline 360. So uh, this window shows us all of the different Articulate apps that we might have installed from Articulate 360. And of course we can see here Storyline 360. So I'll go ahead and click open to launch Storyline 360 and we'll give it a moment to wake up. All right, so once we have Storyline up and running, it brings us here to the start screen. And there's a lot to take in here, all right? So everything we see here in this white space, this might look completely different on your computer from what I have on mine because Articulate uses this space to announce different features or uh, new things that have been added to Articulate Storyline. So we'll focus most of our attention here on this purple bar on the left. Now, uh, over here, this is where we can create a new project. We can jump straight into recording our screen or we can import different types of content. So for example, we can import PowerPoint slides to create a new project in Storyline. Now down here, this is where we can open up recent projects that we might have been working on. And of course down here, this is where we can browse for additional projects. Now, of course I could jump in and create a new project from scratch, but to help you uh, give a tour of the Articulate Storyline interface, I'm going to go ahead and open up a recent project here. And we'll give it a moment to load here. All right, so when you create a new project in Articulate Storyline or you open up an existing project, it's gonna bring you here uh, to Story View in Articulate Storyline. And I know I'm in Story View because I can see that tab highlighted up here. Now you might hear me refer to this space as Scene View. You might hear others call it Scene View, but it's technically called Story View in Articulate Storyline. And this is where we can see a high level overview of our entire project and all of the different slides and scenes that are contained within it. Now, before we jump in here, I have to say, you know, there's a lot going on here and it can seem really overwhelming. What I want you to remember is that Articulate Storyline is very, 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 very similar to any, you know, Microsoft Office uh, program that you may use. And I will say that as we jump into Articulate Storyline here, you'll see that it's incredibly similar to PowerPoint. All right. So don't allow yourself to get too intimidated. I promise you you're not going to launch a nuclear missile and, you know, start World War III. Ooh, I shouldn't joke about that. All right, so as we look at Story View here in Articulate Storyline, up here across the top, we have our ribbon. And again, the ribbon is going to be very similar to what you might expect in PowerPoint or another Microsoft Office uh, project. And then we have a couple of different panels here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up a slide. I can op open up any of my slides by simply double-clicking here. And it brings us into... Slide view, and this is where we can edit uh, the individual slides within our project. And this is where things start looking very, very similar to PowerPoint. So like I said, up here across the top, we have our ribbon and the ribbon operates almost identically to PowerPoint. So for example, you know, if I wanted to insert, let's say a shape onto my slide, how would you do that in PowerPoint? Well, you'd go to the insert tab and you'd go to the shapes drop down, and you would select a shape and you could draw a shape on your slide. That's how easy it is. It's exactly the same in Storyline. And I'll go ahead and delete the shape, right? So we have our ribbon here across the top. This is where we can insert different types of content like shapes or pictures. And of course, because Storyline allows us to create uh, interactive e-learning content, we have the options to insert buttons. We can do dials and hotspots and markers and 
all sorts of really cool things to make our courses more engaging and interactive. And of course, we have our slides tab and our design tab. This allows us to uh, customize the look and feel of our slides. We have our transitions tab and our animations tab, just like you have in PowerPoint, where we can add slide transitions and animations. And of course, we have the home tab, and this is going to look very familiar to PowerPoint. This is where we can quickly edit the formatting of our text, all of that really good stuff. All right, so over here on the right-hand side, we have our triggers panel, and down here we have our slide layers panel. Triggers are the really cool and powerful thing that allows us to uh, write instructions for what we want Storyline to do without having to write any code. So for example, if we have a slide here like this one, and we want the learner to be able to click a button, like a next button to advance to the next slide over here, we can create a trigger that says jump to slide, next slide, when the user clicks or swipes next. Pretty simple. It allows us to write code without having to know how to write code, which, you know, I couldn't code myself out of a paper bag if my life depended on it. Now down here we have slide layers. I'll show you what those look like here in a moment. Over here in the middle, we have our slide space. Obviously, that's where we edit our slides. And over here, we see the different thumbnails for uh, the different slides within our project. Now down here, we have our timeline, states, and notes panel. So the timeline gives us a visual representation of everything that's happening on our slide. And this is where we can control when different elements animate in or animate out uh, and that sort of stuff. And then we have states and notes, which are more advanced features that I'll talk about in other videos. Now, to give you an example of slide layers, to best explain that, I'll go to a different slide here. Let's go down to slide 2.1. Again, I'm here in story view, and I'll double click to open up slide 2.1 here. You can see here on our timeline, we have a more complex timeline because there's a bit more animations happening here. Uh, but down here, we have our slide layers. And slide layers allow us to essentially add slides on top of slides. And they're you know, traditionally used for creating interactive content. So on this particular slide, I have these three characters with these three buttons here. And when the learner clicks, for example, this button, greet the customer, it's gonna show this slide layer, which is like a little pop-up window on top of the slide. So slide layers allow us to create uh, really cool interactive content. So that's an overview of the Articulate Storyline interface. And you know what? We're still alive. It's pretty easy, right? Now, in terms of next steps, if you want to continue learning how to use Articulate Storyline, check out the links down below for all of my Articulate Storyline resources. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and bell button to get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, join us inside the eLearning Designers Academy where we focus on helping new instructional designers and eLearning developers grow their careers by focusing on skills first. Otherwise, my name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.